Suppose you have an investment project which requires a huge amount of investment this year and it will start generating cash flows in the future. How do you make whether to undertake this investment or not? There are different criteria people use to make those kind of decisions. And I have listed here some of them starting from net present value to the profitability index. In this video, I'm going to explain how to use internal rate of return or IRR in deciding whether to undertake a proposed investment or not. I want to start with a basic concept of IRR or internal rate return. What is IRR? In a simplest sense, IRR is the discount rate that makes the NPV equals to zero. That definition seems a little technical. Let's try to understand the meaning of IRR with the help of this simple equation. So here I have a cash flow. Uh, the first cash flow, which is your initial investment, defined as CF, and CF1 to CFN, which refers to cash flow of that project starting from year one to year n. So if you divide the first year cash flow by one plus IRR, that means it gives the present value of the future cash flow. If you divide the CF2 by one plus IRR to the power two, so it gives the present value of the cash flow that is occurring at the end of year two if you discount by IRR. And similarly, what does this do then? It gives us basically the present value of all the future cash flow discounted at the IRR rate. Then if you sum them all, that is zero. That means what discount rate makes this equation equal to zero, that discount rate is called internal rate of return. Or in other words, internal rate of return is the discount rate that makes the present value of all future cash flow exactly equal to the initial outlay or expenditure so that the net present value of that project becomes zero. Now, how do you use that IRR in order to decide whether to undertake an investment project or not. The simple rule I have written here and very common, you can find everywhere. The rule is if IRR is greater than or equal to cost of capital, cost of capital, then you undertake that project because it returns higher rate of return than your cost of capital. And reversely, if IRR is less than cost of capital, you do not undertake that kind of project because the rate of return on that investment is less than the cost that you have to pay to finance the project. So let's try to understand the concept of IRR with the help of an example. And I have designed an example in which it requires 45,000 of initial investment. And if you make 45,000 of initial investment, it is start to generate cash starting from first year to five year. And after that, there's no cash flow, no value of the project. So in this case, how do you find IRR then? So that is a general question. So what you can do is now you can you have a project which gives you the future cash flow like 28,000 in the first year, 12,000 in the second year, 10,000 third year, 10,000 fourth year and 10,000 five year. So now what you can do is you can discount them all of this to the present, right? You can discount all of the future value to the present. If you want to discount it, you need some discount rate. 
and we don't know what that discount rate is but you can discount all the future value to the present value right remember the formula so what rate of discount can you use to discount all this future cash flow so that if you all if you add all of this cash flow it should be equal to zero meaning what discount rate makes all present value of this future cash flow exactly equal to the initial expenditure that discount rate is called the internal rate of return or IRR so just the same concept I explained here how you discount to the present right the first period cash flow can be discounted by 1 plus IRR to the power 1 second year cash flow you can discount by 1 plus IRR to the power 2 and third year cash flow you can discount 1 plus IRR to the power 3 so you can discount all of the future cash flow to the present and now sum these all and if you sum these all that value should be equal to zero so what rate of discount makes this happen that rate of discount is called internal rate of return and we can solve this equation mathematically but sometimes it gets very tough so what I want to do is I want to use Excel to solve this kind of problem so how do you do this in Excel so in Excel Excel has a IRR function which can easily solve this kind of problems so how do you use Excel so here is a basic way to use this function IRR and all the values so I want to emphasize one specific point here the IRR function should include all of the cash flows of the project including the cash flow at the beginning of the period and further when you use Excel's IRR function you should not leave any blank cells in between and sometimes some project might not return cash in some years if that is the case you have to put zero in those Excel cells so that Excel calculate IRR easily so let's look at the same example here and how we do this in Excel so so as I just explained in Excel we have IRR function which we can use to find the IRR for this problem so it's very easy and I think it is easy with this example so what I want to do is you are being asked to find IRR and I always put this period here uh, usually in the first column and we have a cash flow in the second column how do you do then so basically IRR and it goes from B3 to B8 B3 basically refers to your cash uh, flow in period 0 and B8 refers to the your last cash flow remember the first cash flow is negative this is so important if you forget to put negative then Excel will give you error because for Excel to solve this IRR equation one of the value should be negative so if you do that that means you get 21.65 percent so what is this if you undertake in this investment then this investment is going to generate 21.65 percent return per annum and whether to undertake this project or not depends on the cost of capital if the cost of capital meaning the money you borrowed to fund this project is less than or equal to 21.65 percent then you, it is beneficial to take this project but if the cost of the financing is more than 21.65 percent or 25 uh, 65 percent then it is not beneficial to take this project because it returns less than what you pay for your borrowed money 
So what I want to do next is I want to make this example more real. And in this example, as you can see, I tweak this little bit. Instead, the cash flow coming every year, it comes at a different time and the time interval is not same. For example, you invest 45,000 at the beginning of the period and you get 28,000 after a month, 12,000 after six months, 10,000 after 1.5 years, 10,000 after two years, and 10,000 after three years. Now, what is IRR? Look at the difference here. In earlier example, we had equal time in trouble, but here the time is not equal. So the time is unequal and which is more real. So how do you solve this kind of problem? Again, Excel has a nice function called XRRR. This function can be used when cash flows are occurring at irregular intervals. And how we use this function? XIRR and you start values, all the values starting from current period and dates. So those date refers to corresponding date when the cash flow occur. So the, there is another argument is guess. You can ignore it. Sometimes if the problem is complex, Excel wants to know some sorts of starting value. But most cases we will ignore this guess part. So all we need is values and dates to solve this problem. And let's see how we can do this in Excel. Again, in Excel, to make this problem workable, instead of putting uh, today after a month, after six months, I put the exact date. Let's assume that today is January 4th, 2017. And after a month means February 4th, 2017. And after six months, that means 6-4-2017. Six, after 1.5 years means 6 4 2018 after two years means uh, 1 4 2019 and after three years means 1 4 2020. So we have the date here in the column A and we have the cash flow in column B. So how do you calculate IRR? As I explained, XIRR, all you need is B3 to B8, which is your cash flows starting from period zero and comma A3 to A8. This means the date corresponding to each cash flow. That's all you need. And once you input this and hit enter, then you're going to get 81.57%. What does this mean? This means if you invest 45,000 today and you're going to get 28,000 after a month, 12,000 after six months, 10,000 after 1.5 years, 10,000 after two years, 10,000 after three years, then rate of return on your investment is 81.75%. Or in other word, what we can say is 81.57% is the rate that makes the NPV of this project zero and just to show you that and I have calculated here using XNPV and if you calculate NPV of this project using this 81.57 percent internal rate of return your NPV is is going to be zero does it make sense to you and again the lastly how do you make the investment decision you always compare your I R R with the cost of capital, which is we usually do it by R. So if I R R is greater or equals to R, then this project is profitable. And if I R R is less than R, that means your cost is more than the return on the investment. You don't undertake that kind of investment. I think it makes sense. Thank you.